For those of you on the high def, give me a minute, I'm waiting for a ding. You're going to hear it in four seconds. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for TheMediaSpeaks.com, www.TheMediaSpeaks.com. Hey guys, as promised, it's spring freaking cleaning! I am going through all of the new stories and all of the old stories that I have. If I have it, you're about to get it. And if I don't get to it in the next three days, gone, absolutely freaking deleted. So if I don't get to it tonight, guys, it's not going to happen. I'm doing this straight through. If you're somebody watching this that owns a radio station, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, and blah, 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 fill in the blanks, guys, they go for about two hours when you add commercials. That's what I'm going to do tonight. You're not going to see me break from now till 6 in the morning unless I happen to take a bathroom break, in which case I'm going to try to screen share passing time. Will it work? I can't promise because every time I try to do a screen share, it doesn't work. It only works for Kyle. But I will say this. I will say I'm going to try, and I'm going to be here for two hours. All right, guys, here is what we are doing. The last thing I want to get to, if the high def dies, this might be posted as a webcam video. If my high definition is gone, that doesn't mean that the show is doing so bad that it's got awful camera work. What it means is the show is doing well enough that the media speaks, trusts me to go live on their server, which I'm doing now. So I'm going to try to post the high def version. We're going to see how it goes. It depends on battery power. It depends on whether or not it takes, I don't know, an eon to load it. But otherwise, I'm going to try. Guys, this is from Natural News. Uh, Joey Corridillo. Uh, Cord is it Cordillo or Cordillo? You never know when you see the two L's because you want to be so politically correct. Joey, you had a great article. Natural News, can coconut oil help Alzheimer's patients? And this matters because my landlady, whose name is Betty, it has to be one of the nicest landladies in the whole city. Easily. When I'm, it hasn't happened recently, but when I was late on rent in the past, Never a late charge, never anything. Well, unfortunately, her husband has Alzheimer's disease, and I've been trying to tell her about this. But I'm the long-haired weird guy that is always paying his rent, but you can't trust him for things that matter of science. You know what? If I was that old, I wouldn't trust me either. But listen to this, because I'm telling you people it is the truth and it matters. Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative brain condition that comes with a multi-billion dollar per year cost to the American public and its takeover doesn't seem to be slowing down. Slowing down. It is estimated that in 2013 alone, Alzheimer's disease will cost Americans more than $200 billion. That's more than even Rihanna's talentless ass makes. With its prevalence appearing to be at an all-time high, it appears, it says, that the medical world and the public should be looking for better alternatives in regard to preventing its takeover. The westernized approach for treating such a condition has some upsides, but many crucial factors seem to be left out of the overall equation. Foods like coconuts being one of the major areas to assess. Guys, we're only four minutes into this, and already we are talking about how to cure Alzheimer's disease. I think we're on it. The effects of coconut oil on the brain as an amazing food, and luckily science has shown that it is among one of the most healing in nature in regard to helping Alzheimer's patients. The ketone bodies, which are given off when coconut oil's fatty acids are metabolized by the liver, can be a perfect fuel source for the brain, a trait that can surely help Alzheimer's patients. And since I'm on for two hours, I'm going to go in-depth on a lot of these articles. The brain has been impacted by Alzheimer's disease, cannot efficiently use glucose for fuel as it once did. Ketones help to solve this problem by providing a different fuel source that the brain can use. 
instead. Think of this fuel swapping arrangement much like a hybrid car switches between gas and electricity. It says carbohydrates being the gas and ketone bodies acting as much cleaner, more efficient electricity. The research behind the utilization, it goes on, of ketones for mental health is very promising. From speeding up the body's metabolism to keeping the brain functioning optimally, science has proven that coconut oil can truly help those who suffer from Alzheimer's disease. Are you hearing me, people? I'm not going to say that this is going to cure Alzheimer's disease. I'm not a doctor. What I can say is that the studies that I am seeing in front of me and that I am trying to share with all of you seems to point to the bare minimum it does half of what it says. How many of you that have a loved one with Alzheimer's would be happy if this did just half of what it says that it in fact can do. If you're somebody who thinks that that might be something that would be wonderful to you, then please look into this. And for you, whoever you are, I'm going to keep reading. Coconut oil is mainly compro composed of saturated fat, and as bad as it sounds, it's really not. The human body is perfectly capable of utilizing saturated fat in many aspects, as it is a requirement for countless internal functions. Hormone production, brain function, cellular health, bone health, and even immunity, and for those of you Kesha fans, that means your body's ability to fight off disease, the list is quite extensive. A frustrating fact, it says, is that for the past 60 or so years, the public has been told to avoid a saturated fat in order to maintain adequate levels of health. Unfortunately, it goes on, avoiding a saturated fat is not the needed key to better health. It's quite the opposite. Coconut oil is also loaded with medium-chain fatty acids, uh, MCFAs, a type of fatty acid that is sent directly to the liver where it gets used as energy almost immediately. Once the MCFAs are metabolized, their byproducts, which is the ketones, are then sent up to the brain where they can be used as fuel and this is how something as simple as coconut oil can help those suffering from Alzheimer's disease. So people, right there it is in front of you. Go ahead, look into coconut oil, especially if you have somebody that might be suffering from something like this. because. Let's face it, the doctors have pretty much told all of you with loved ones that have this that it is time to absolutely give up on them, that there is absolutely no cure, and that is not true. As I just pointed out, there are things that you can do to, if not do as much as they say they are. Let, let, let's pretend the coconut industry had a grand conspiracy and in that conspiracy, they decided that the best thing to do was to promote coconut oil. And in reality, coconut oil only does half as much as they say that it does. Who listening to this would not settle for that? Do me a favor. Go look up coconut oil. This is from the Telegraph. There will be more wealth confiscation, without a doubt. Now, I'm going to get to some newer stories later. and This is dated back uh, April 30th, 2013. Today being 6-12-2013. Guys, I could not get rid of this story. I couldn't. You come to the correct views for things that matter. And this is something that matters. I have not been able to get to this because I've been having uh, to cover a lot of other things that matter. And that's what spring cleaning is about. And that's why you're watching. Richard Evans. 
European politicians will take the, quote, easy option of taking money from the rich rather than raising taxes and cutting spending to deal with the continent's debt problem. Lars Christensen, the head of Sanxo Banks, has said, as if the raid on uninsured savings in Cyprus would be repeated, he told City AM there will be future bail-ins, that is, loss of deposits, and other, de uh, other types of confiscation of wealth in the Eurozone, without a doubt. Now, for those of you that may be watching this for the first time, or those of you that have tuned in live, welcome aboard, hit subscribe, um, Cyprus is a country. And what these people did in Cyprus is what everybody else in the world does. They went ahead and they stashed their money away. And they put their money away. And they did what you're supposed to do with, well, supposed to do with your money. And they went ahead and they stored it in banks. And the banks decided that the people of Cyprus needed to help pay for the debts that they owed to the people who print their money, which is to say, the Eurozone. Which was an awful idea, by the way. Much like the Amero will be here. When you hear Amero, RUN! Alright. The banks went into the accounts of the average Cyprus citizens. I'm in America. How many people are in America with me today? Let's pretend it was our country. They went into you and I's account, okay? Are you hearing me now? That's what they did. And they went into these areas, they went into these bank accounts, I should say, and took their money. This is a warning that this is going to happen elsewhere. And the answer to this is to not invest in non-tangible items. Gold, silver, platinum, copper, whatever. Invest in that. Things that you own and things that you can later resell for a higher value. That is the answer. And you guys want to accuse Alex Jones, like Bloomberg did, of going ahead and uh, promoting gold so that he can make money? Accuse me of it. Accuse me of it! When I don't have a single gold sponsor on this show. Media Speaks is brought to you by Value-Pack. Go to Mediaspeaks.com, click it. They've got everything, guys. They don't have gold. I'm not paid by anyone to say this. So try to say it about me. Ain't gonna work. There's no other ruralistic way forward, it says, if politicians continue to fail to deal with the basic indebtedness problem, indebtedness problem across Europe. They will either have to raise taxes and cut spending, or politicians will take the easier route and take money from the rich. And don't forget that it is the rich who pay the people who work under them, which are likely the people who are listening to me talk now. Earlier this week, again April 30th, savers at the Bank of Cyprus saw 37.5 PC of their balances above 100,000 euros converted into shares with a further 22.5 PC at risk and 30 PC frozen. Following the Cyprus deal, several German economists proposed that wealth taxes be used to fund future bailouts in the Eurozone, with British owners of holiday homes potentially in the line of fire. Look, people, how much plainer can it be? Those of you that put money in any bank in any country at any time are no longer safe. Long-time libertarians like me would say that you were never safe. But we were all nutcases, remember? Point is that right now, as it stands, there are people, like I just read to you, 
who are promising that there will be more wealth confiscation. And that means going into your bank account, taking your money. So do not put your money in banks! How much play there can it possibly freaking be? And I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, I'm going to get more people here that think that somehow I am the one who is a nutcase. That somehow it's me that has made all of this up. Guys, that would be absolutely mathematically impossible. I can't just pick a random story and make it up. They are warning you that if you trust in banks, that they some point may in fact steal that money. So invest in tangibles. That would be platinum, gold, silver, and copper. And again, I don't get a penny for saying that. And this is from Infowars.com, Kurt Nemo. I promised you guys some new stories and newer stories you will get. Dated June 11th, 2013, that would be uh, less than four hours ago. Efforts are underway to portray the NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden as, well, never mind, one of these wonderful, uh, who is it that did this to me this time? I'm telling you, the more they do it, the angrier I get. This is international science news that felt the need to put a pop-up on my damn show when I tried to cover your article, but when I call it up, it plays some bullshit that nobody wants to hear. International Science Times, which I'm going to get to in a minute. Your website sucks, and I hope none of my viewers go to you. Um, Infowars.com, Kurt Nemo, effort to portray NSA whistleblower Snowden as Chinese intelligence operative is underway. Edward Snowden is not a traitor to the American people. Edward Snowden, rather, is a hero to the American people. This man has done wonderful things. Most of the people in America, and I'm talking about millions of people, were being spied upon by our government. And let me go over real quick what rights mean. Rights, according to the Constitution, are things that are recognized to be given to you from God. For those of you Darwinists and atheists and agnostics in the crowd, these were things that you were born with. They were given to you at birth, be it by God, which I believe, or be it by birth. They were given to you. And that includes the right to not be spied upon. So it stands to reason that if Eric Snowden was brought in in any capacity to see such things either folding or unfolding, then it stands to reason that Eric Snowden should stand up for the rights that you had from God or birth, if you're so inclined, stands to reason that if those rights are under attack, that somebody should stand up for them. Well, that person did, and his name is Edward Snowden. And I'm not going to go into this as heavily as I was going to. For those of you that want the backstory on this, do me a favor and go to uh, TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up the work that Anthony Court has done on this. And you'll see a whole bunch of work. Happy 420 to those of you so inclined. You'll see a lot of work on this from Anthony Corp. I'm going to go over the latest news I have on it. 
Efforts are underway to portray the NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden as an intelligence operative working for China. And basically, guys, I'm going to cut ahead here. He escaped to a country that would allow him to escape, and now they're trying to say that because that country is Hong Kong, that this American hero was somehow a traitor. Are you smelling absolute BS like I am? I bet that you are. <sighs> On Sunday, it was reported that officials in the United States are seriously considering the possibility the Bulls Allen analysis works for the Chinese. Yeah, and I work for the French. On the face of it, it looks like it's under some sort of Chinese control, idiot former CIA officer Robert Baer told CNN. Bear said that because Snowden fled to Hong Kong, one of two special administrative regions in China, instead of a more friendly country such as Sweden or Iceland, it is likely that he is working for the Chinese government. So because this American hero decided to tell most of America that your government is destroying the First Amendment, First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, excuse me, Fourth Amendment, which the government has said is a God-given, again, atheists, birth-given right, something that you are born with in this country, they are saying that in order for him to talk about how that's being destroyed, he is a traitor who must be working for the Chinese government because he fled to Hong Kong. Guys, he fled because he didn't want his ass kicked by the U.S. government, who was going to trash him for simply doing the right thing. That is the correct view! That is why it's called the correct views, and I'm not going to pull any punches over it! But I will say this. Mr. Snowden escaped to Hong Kong, and I hope you would. I hope that you have the most blessed, God wonderful, fruitful life that anyone has ever had, because you, Edward Snowden, are an American hero. That is how it appears to be to me. We'll never get him from China. <laughs> We'll never get him from China. There's not a chance he'll disappear there, he predicted. He won't be able to go anywhere else. But if, in fact, the Chinese had a hand in this, they're not about to send him to the United States. Guys, the Chinese did not have a hand on this. If you believe that, then you have a pumpkin for a freaking head. What happened was Edward Snowden stood up for the American people and had to hide in a foreign country in order to get away from it. That is the correct view. And may I say, God bless this man. And yes, I absolutely mean that in every single way. This man has in fact gone the extra mile for all of us people. How could you not see that? This man has done wonderful, wonderful things for us. And I think it's time for us to say thank you, which I'm doing now. Again, for more on this, go look at Anthony Court's work at uh, TheMediaSpeaks.com. This is for the in from the International Science Times. The stupid, filthy, freaking swines that want video to play when you click on their ad. The swines that might never be on this show again. Um, let me point this out. This is kind of creepy. Uh, the behind-the-scenes queen, Cristal, is in fact from Florida. So this is good. Mega mosquitoes. Why gallon nipper bites feel like getting stabbed? I have not been attacked or otherwise accosted by these mosquitoes, mega mosquitoes, but I am going to say this. If you think it feels like getting stabbed, you're probably a pussy. Okay, I said it. Yes, I said it. Although, I'm sure it probably hurts a whole hell of a lot. And uh, this is the news that I have on it. 
Oh my god, this site is unbearable. It's playing even more garbage for me. Never go to this site, by the way. Never go to iSciencetimes.com because they give you too many pop-ups. Mega mosquitoes whose bites feel like getting stabbed are scheduled to invade Florida this summer. And if sinkholes, which are happening there, weren't enough to deal with, now Sunshine State residents have to fend off mutant insects. According to Click Orlando, Florida's mega mosquitoes called gallinippers, or even hairy legged zebras, are about 20 times the size of a normal mosquito. Fox 35 reports an anti mutant insect can penetrate through multiple layers of clothing and will bite anything from people to pets. They've even been known to feed on fish and tadpoles. You know what? Yeah, life goes on. I report this because I have a lot of people here that are really into the science aspects that I tend to get to at the end of the shows. But it just seems, it seems like something you should know, but it seems a real crybaby-ish to me. Like other mosquitoes, only the female mega mosquitoes feed on animal blood. They feed day and night using a saw-like jaw to drill down into a mosquito's skin. The pain associated with the mosquito bite happens when the mosquito withdraws its straw-like jaw. One researcher described it as like pulling a, hick, a hook out of the skin. I fish. It sucks. It's not that bad. While a mega mosquito has already been spotted, most of them right now are just eggs sitting in dirt. But with the summer storm season, it says, approaching, floodwaters are going to cause the mega mosquitoes to hatch. In an urban area, it is not really their habitat, one scientist told Fox 35, but if you live in, if you live near a pasture type of area, a grassy area that floods, then that's where you will see these mosquitoes most likely. Ooh. Another researcher, it says, told Fox 35 that the mega mosquitoes bite is extremely painful and feels like a stab wound. He is a puss. It's mean, he told Fox 35, and the mega mosquito, it goes after people, and it bites, and it hurts. Alright, guys, here's what I'm going to say, just being real with you. It says, and a lot of people, especially if you live in Ohio, where I live, you sort of already know this sort of thing. But, a mosquitoes breed in standing water. Plain and simple, that's what they do. So obviously, the way to avoid such things from getting to you is obviously to destroy the standing water that you might have. And of course, it can be in your drains, it can be in your gutters, it can be in barrels maybe that have collected some rainwater from a barbecue. Here is how I'm going to tell you to get rid of it, and as somebody from Ohio, I can promise you that it does in fact work. All that you need to do is pour a little bit of kerosene in any of the standing water that you currently have on your property. That will make it impossible for the mosquitoes to actually breed. They, their eggs won't hatch. And that will put an end to this real quick. That's why you listen to the correct views. Now guys, what I'm going to do is take a break. And do me a favor, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, go ahead and click on the Nitro Pack link, Nitro-Pack. If you do so, you will find right away that you get some of the best deals that you've ever seen on camping supplies, on prep supplies, on absolutely anything. What I'm going to do is jump off here real quick, give you that commercial break, for those of you watching live, here's a little bit of passing time with War On For Your Mind. That is my band, for those of you that don't know. And I will be back shortly. Three minutes and four seconds. This is the correct fuse. This video edited by Kyle Phillips. Thank you. 
yeah, friends, and we are back. Let me check my screen real quick and make sure that you're back live. Uh, how do you shut the screen share off? There you go, screen share shut off. Guys, we're back. We're live. This is the correct views. Doing some spring cleaning. That means if I don't get to the show tonight, it's gone, and you're not going to see it elsewhere. And we're going for another half hour break free. NewYorkLawJournal.com posted this. City defends heavy use of stop and frisk by police department. Well, of course they do. That stands to reason. I bet you the same thing could have been said if you were in Nazi freaking Germany and they said Adolf Hitler eh, promotes, or well, what, or not promotes, I, I want to make sure I get the quote right. Defend, Adolf Hitler defends the use of gassing the Jews. Well, I bet he freaking did since he was the jerk that was gassing the Jews. City defends heavy use of stop and frisk by police department. Well, I'm sure they do, since they are the asses that are stopping and frisking. Idiots, idiots, idiots. How can anybody be stupid enough to fall for this? I don't care if you do happen to think the new Fallout Boy CD is called Rock and Roll. How could you be stupid enough to fall for this too? The Fallout Boy is not rock and roll, by the way. A lawyer from New York City insisted yesterday that plaintiffs have thoroughly failed to prove that New York City police violate the U.S. Constitution on a massive scale by stopping, questioning, frisking young men of color without reasonable suspicion that they have committed or about to commit a crime. Okay. Adolf Hitler did not kill anybody who was not in some way against the furtherment of Adolf Hitler's fascist regime. Are you seeing the analogy here? Heidi Grossman, good name, Deputy Chief Grossman, Deputy Chief of the City Law Department Special Federal Litigation Division began closing arguments in the grinding 10-week bench trial before Southern District Judge Shreya Scheindlin, see profile, S-C-H-E-I-N-D-L-I-N. I did not know how many German names were in this when I did the Hitler analogy, just to be clear. Well, I knew, but I didn't remember. By questioning the plaintiff's claim, Sieg Heil, I'm so sorry. By questioning the plaintiff's claims with regard to each and every one of the 19 stops described from the witness stand by names, plaintiffs, or their witnesses. Do I have to spell this out for you people? I don't think I do. But for those of you that might be dumb enough to not know better, and at this point, guys, I have no idea how you couldn't know better. The system, the police, the governments, the powers that be, the them, are saying that they're not doing anything, anything wrong based on the fact that they don't believe that they're doing anything wrong. How many of you can see through that? I'm not talking to white people. I'm not talking to black people. I'm not talking to Hispanics. I'm talking to all of them. How many of you are dumb enough to fall for this? None of you. So stand up, people. Stand up. I've been doing this for a year and a half now. You know what? They haven't done anything to me. Let them do something to me. I'm not a suicide. I'm not suicidal. I don't drive drunk. I don't drive incredibly fast. I don't do anything that would result in my death. I don't do anything at all that could kill me. 
So if I suddenly die, or I suddenly stop posting, then you know that they got me. And you know what? Maybe they'll win. Maybe they'll get me. I don't know how many viewers I have right now, but I guarantee it'll go up a whole lot if the bastards kill me. So bring it on! And I'll tell you what, if something happens to me, my girlfriend who has stayed out of this will be a hundred times worse than I ever was on all of you bastards. So go ahead, bring it on. See what you got. That's what it takes, people. You just go up there and you be yourself and you do not apologize for it. And you tell people that you are not going to stand for this anymore. And then it ends. That's the end of the story. It's that simple. Now this is from the star.com. Durham police constable threatens to beat up man and plant cocaine on him. I'm from Canton, Ohio. That's where this show is being broadcast from. Canton, Ohio is known to most of you that know it at all as the Pro Football Hall of Fame. For those of you that happen to like underground industrial leaning uh, music with a very complex live keyboard solo frenzy uh, side to it, you might know it as the home of Passing Time, who you just heard when I took a bathroom break. Guys, Canton, Ohio is a really good place to get shot at and die. Outsourcing, and I'm talking about the Hoover plant, and I pray to God on the stack of Bibles. If you don't remember anything else that I say all night, please remember to never, ever, buy a Hoover vacuum cleaner unless it's used. If you buy used, they're not getting any money for it. The reason I say that is because there used to be a really nice city called North Canton, Ohio. And in it was the Hoover Company. Rather than pay their workers a fair wage, what the Hoover Company did was close down their plant, outsourced their jobs, and destroyed the city. If you buy a Hoover, if you buy a new Hoover, don't even listen to my show. I don't even want you listening to my show. That's how much I hate them. Do me a favor, people. Do not buy a Hoover. My point being that I live in an area where the police are not usual, are not often, I'm going to say usually, not often fair to the people. And that looks like what's going on here. So what I'm saying is that this is a story that I can relate to, and we're going to get into a little bit of it here. This is from Tony Van Alphen. A Tony, a Durham Region police officer threatened to beat up a man and plant cocaine on him during a one-sided, expletive-filled confrontation a graphic video shows. I hurt people and then I make their cocaine fucking appear. The armed constable barks into the face of the burly young man. You see how I work? You see what I do? Yeah, I'll tell you what, you little cop. I see that the only way that you can get in the face of a burly man is to do so under the fact that A, the law is going to be on your side, and B, that you have a gun and a taser and backup on your side. Because you don't have the balls to step to this person in any other way. Jerk! The eight and a half minute video, which appeared recently on YouTube, also features the constable appearing to provoke the bald man into hitting him during the sometimes tense grilling beside a house in Oshawa in late 2011. The star, it says, is not aware of the context of the incident outside what is seen in the video. And we're about to swear here again. Shut your fucking mouth and do something. Do something. Please fucking do something. Take a swing so I can, says the pig, excuse me, says the constable in the video, which is barely audible in several parts. 
Durham Police, it says, disciplined the constable who uses the F word more than three dozen times in the video for dis discreditable conduct over the incident. He remains on the force's front lines. How many of you could go to work and swear at someone like this and still have your job? That's what a cop can do. And people say, well, don't you understand, Sam? You see, he's a cop, and he sees so much BS that he is to be forgiven for what he has done. Because he has seen so much that he is, in fact, just broken down. You know what? And that is utter BS. How many of you work in a convenience store? Maybe you've been held up at gunpoint. Maybe you've seen enough. That doesn't mean you can treat the person in line like they're a piece of human scum. The cops that did this need to be addressed and removed from the police force. It is time for them to realize we pay you. You do not pay us. And we are not subordinate nor submissive to you. <sighs> Jerks. All right, guys, check this out. Natural News, May 21st. A list of dangerous antidepressants that cause sudden death is rapidly expanding. <sighs> there are people close to me. My girlfriend can tell you there are people close to her that will not listen. If you are taking, on a regular basis, an antidepressant, if you're taking some kind of head shrink drug, then you're, you're killing yourself. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get real. It's 4.44 in the morning. I got one hour and 16 minutes to go. I got time to get real with my listeners. You wouldn't listen to me if you didn't want me getting real. My dad just died in October. It's June. I think about it all the time. And we had ups and downs. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I had a wonderful father who had faults. And what he did is he made me. And I like to think that I am at least a very good person with just as many, if 